poetry lovers, poetry curious people. February is National Haiku Writing Month. And I will put a link down to the website that promotes National Haiku Writing Month. I confess I have not been writing haiku during this month. Too many other concerns have taken me away from participating. But it struck me as a cue to do a, just a little bit of talking about haiku because I am by no means a, I don't know, well-versed in writing haiku. One thing I do know is that it doesn't have to be five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. And that has to do with the difference between the English language and the Japanese language. For example, you can have one word in the Japanese language that is five syllables, and seven syllables might be only two words. So in English, where you have more monosyllabic words, words that are only one syllable, you can actually end up using a lot more words. Now, there could be all kinds of nuances. I don't know if Japanese has articles um, like a uh and the and an and all of that kind of stuff that would be counted as a syllable in, in English. So there, there are a lot of subtleties from, that come from the differences in the language and there's a lot of subtleties to um, haiku writing in general. So it's not just about the syllables, even though it is technically syllabic based writing. So what I thought I would do, this is booktube, is I would talk about where you can find haiku and where you can learn more about haiku. So I don't have this book anymore. I think the copy I had was so old that I let it go and then I never replaced it. But if you really want to get into some of the things I just talked about, the difference between the languages, why 575 is not what you have to do. You can do that, but it's not, it doesn't mirror in English what happens in Japanese. It's, it's called the, the Haiku Handbook, and it is by William J. Higginson. It is still available, so you, you I think there was like a 25th anniversary issue or something like that, reprinting of the book. So yes, if you want to get into haiku in terms of learning about its nuances, the book in English to get is Haiku Handbook by William J. Higginson. If you are more versed in contemporary haiku and you have other books to recommend, feel free to leave them down in the comments. So what I have in terms of haiku in my library, it's kind of limited, but I have a Dover. There's a Dover Thrift Edition right here. The classic tradition of haiku. It doesn't have much of an introduction. It has a foreword. So it kind of does um, acknowledgments to the translators by just giving their um, initials. In this Dover Thrift Edition, they actually have the Japanese, and then they have the English translation. So that's interesting. Some of these look like they're more Tonka. In any case, why not? Good old Dover Thrift Editions. Cheap. You can get a little insight and a little feeling for haiku. This is Frog Pond. It's an old... When I was getting into haiku, <laughs> learning more about it um, was a long time ago. My perception of a long time ago, but within the last 20 years anyway, surely. What edition is this? So this is put out, I think it's, is it the, the Haiku Society of America. 
So this is a journal that they put out, and they still have a website. And I don't know if they still do the print version of this journal. But I will put a link to the website. And I still don't see the date. I'm trying to figure out how... Wow, not 1998, surely. Anyway, um, so it has contemporary. This is contemporary haiku. This, I assume, is not. It says the classic tradition of haiku, so it probably goes through the various famous writers of haiku within the Japanese language. So this is going to, like I showed you, it has the Japanese and then the translation. This is haiku written in English. Okay, no translation. This is haiku written in English. And variants of haiku, variations. I think it has what haibun and senru or something like that. Um, yeah. So there it is. Frog Pond. The Frog Pond named after favorite, favorite, famous poem. And I don't know, maybe that famous poem was by Basho. I don't remember. So this was actually more interesting than I thought it would be. This is Basho, the complete haiku. Um, so it's translated with an introduction, biography, and notes by Jane Reichold. So one of the things that was really interesting about this is that there are sections of biography, of Basho's biography, what he was doing at that time, what the influences were that were affecting his, uh, his writing. And it's just, it's culturally fascinating. This period in which... One of, where it was cool to get together, and even a status thing, to get together and write these poems together. So it probably talks about the linking poetry. So it, was, it could be a collaborative thing, or kind of like a contest, and people would do this, and they would go to different cities, and... Yet again, one of the things that struck me is that they would go to different places to view the moon. To view the moon and write haiku about it. And so it was, it was just embedded in the culture of the time, both the writing of the haiku and this, this traveling to view the moon. Uh, it, was, it was super fascinating, so to me being a poetry person. <laughs> um, so there it is, Basho, the complete haiku. I, I, anybody who's slightly interested, whether in haiku or in Japanese culture, I, I would recommend that. And that's it. I don't have too much else to say. Um, again, there will be the resources um, I'll put the names of these links to this um, down below and the name of that um, handbook, the Haiku Handbook, and also a link to the website if anybody wants to belatedly join in the National Haiku Writing Month. Or if you view, view this uh, in a year other than 2022, if you view it later than that, um, you may have time. It's February. They view that as being the, since it's the shortest month of the year, they figure the short, it's the appropriate time to have a daily writing challenge of the shortest form of poetry. <laughs> so, um, so there you go. Take care, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.